Hello, I'm doing a movie review, and the movie I want to review is the 1988 Wes Craven film, The Serpent and the Rainbow. Now, I have The Serpent and the Rainbow on this DVD set where it comes with two other Wes Craven movies, Shocker and The People Under the Stairs. Now, The Serpent and the Rainbow, this is a movie that I've actually been meaning to review for a couple of years now, but for one reason or another, I just never got around to reviewing it. But unfortunately, Wes Craven died last week, and he actually died of brain cancer. So I figured I had to do a review on a Wes Craven movie, and I figured I'll review this one because I personally think this is one of Wes Craven's best films, and I actually think this is one of his most underrated films. Now, before I get on to the actual review, I just want to talk a little bit about Wes Craven and really what I thought of him as a director. Now, Wes Craven, it really does suck to hear that he died, and it really was kind of a shock to me when I heard that he died, and especially the way he died, like dying of brain cancer, that's really gotta be horrible. And it, it, it's sad that he died in general, but the way he died really does kind of... It really does depress me, and it's sad to see him go. It really is. Because he was a great filmmaker. Now, I will admit, I've always found Wes Craven to be somewhat of a hit-or-miss director. Like, I didn't like all his movies, but I'll fight anybody who says that he wasn't a great filmmaker, though. And I don't think anybody can deny that he definitely made a huge contribution to the horror genre. I mean, he directed A Nightmare on Elm Street, which is one of the most legendary horror films ever made, and A Nightmare on Elm Street is one of my top ten favorite films of all time. He also did The Hills Have Eyes, another great movie. He did New Nightmare, which is another great film as well. But... I didn't like all of Wes Craven's movies, though. Like, I personally find the Scream movies to be very overrated. Like, I'm not really a big fan of the Scream movies. I thought the first one was okay, but I did not like the other ones. Except maybe Part 4. I actually didn't mind Scream 4, but in general, I'm not the biggest Scream fan. And there are even some Wes Craven movies that I like, but I can understand why some people wouldn't like them. Like the original The Last House on the Left, which was his first movie. I personally like that movie a lot, but I could see why people don't like that movie, because that really was a very uneven movie. There were some parts of that movie which were disturbing as hell, and then there were other parts of that movie where it almost seemed like Wes Craven was trying to make a comedy, and it was a very uneven movie. I mean, I personally like The Last House on the Left, but I could see why people don't like it. Another movie that I like of his, I could see why people don't like, is Shocker. I love the movie Shocker, but I will admit it is a very silly movie, but I enjoy it myself, but I could get why some people wouldn't like it. The same with The People Under the Stairs. I like The People Under the Stairs a lot, but it's one of those movies where I could see why some people wouldn't like it. He's definitely had his share of good and bad movies, but I'll fight anybody who says that he didn't make a contribution to the horror genre. Like, he really did. Once again, he directed A Nightmare on Elm Street, he directed Scream, which, even though I'm not a big fan of the Scream movies, I definitely can't deny that Scream was a phenomenon. And he always came off in interviews as being a very intelligent, well-spoken man. And he actually really did come off as a very down-to-earth kind of guy. So, Wes Craven, you're definitely going to be missed. And if there is an afterlife, 
I wish you the best of luck in your journey to the great beyond. So now let's talk about the movie The Serpent and the Rainbow. Now The Serpent and the Rainbow is loosely based on a book of the same name by Dr. Wade Davis. Now the book was actually a true story of Wade Davis going down into Haiti to investigate this guy who is said to have come back from the dead as a zombie because of voodoo magic. Now, considering that the book was a true story, and this is a supernatural horror film, I'm assuming that this movie took a lot of liberties with the source material. Now, The Serpent and the Rainbow, I actually think is one of Wes Craven's most mature and adult movies, and it's actually a very political movie. Like, the film takes place in Haiti, of course, but it takes place during the midst of a revolution, which I think that part of the movie is actually factual. Like, I believe there was actually a revolution going on in Haiti, at the time this movie takes place, and the movie takes place in the mid-1980s. I think that aspect of the movie is factual, but I could be wrong, though, because I'll admit I really don't know much about Haiti's history. Now, the plot of the movie is it's about this anthropologist named Dennis Allen, played by Bill Pullman, who is sent down to Haiti by this pharmaceutical company to investigate this guy who was actually pronounced dead, but then a few years later he was found walking around, pretty much a real-life zombie. And this pharmaceutical company wants him to see if maybe this is actually the work of some kind of a drug. So he ends up going down to Haiti, and he meets this female doctor, and throughout the movie, the two of them start to develop kind of a romantic relationship with each other, but basically, as the movie goes on, he eventually meets this guy who is apparently a zombie, and he thinks that there's some kind of scientific explanation for all this. Like, in the movie, he starts getting involved with voodoo, and he doesn't believe that voodoo has any real power. Like, he believes there's a scientific explanation for all of this, but basically, in the movie, he ends up getting pulled into this supernatural world. And it turns out that the police force in this area down in Haiti that the movie takes place in is actually very corrupt. And it turns out that the police captain is actually a voodoo priest and Alan ends up becoming a target for this voodoo priest. So, The Serpent and the Rainbow is a great movie, in my opinion, and this is one of Wes Craven's most underrated films, in my opinion. And as I said earlier in this review, one of the things I really do love about this movie is it is actually a very political movie. For example, the whole movie takes place during a revolution, and also, the main villain of the movie is this corrupt police captain who is also a voodoo priest, and it turns out that all the people that he turned into zombies are people who challenged his authority, people who challenged his power. And this guy in the movie who the voodoo priest turns into a zombie in the beginning of the film, you find out was actually a school teacher who really spoke up for social justice and he really did inspire hope in people, so this voodoo priest turned him into a zombie so he could inspire fear instead. So, once again, it is a very political film. Another thing I like about this movie is this is one of the few movies that 
actually portrays voodoo as being a religion, which it actually is. Like, I feel like a lot of movies that have to do with voodoo, they don't really portray voodoo as being a religion. And in real life, voodoo is a religion. I believe voodoo actually has a lot of its roots in Christianity. Now, the acting in the movie is also pretty damn good as well. Like, Bill Pullman does a really good job in this movie. My only real complaint about Bill Pullman's performance is, in the movie, he has a lot of voiceovers, and I don't know, there was something a little cheesy about some of his dialogue in the voiceovers, but that's just me. I mean, some people might not agree with that, but I don't know, I just found some of the voiceovers that he did in the movie to be a little cheesy. But besides that, he does do a really good job in this movie, and so do all the other actors and actresses in this movie. I would say that most of the acting in this film is really, really good. The movie also has Paul Winfield in it, who plays a good voodoo priest who tries to help Bill Pullman's character throughout the movie. Now, Paul Winfield was also in movies like Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, and The Terminator, and a bunch of other movies as well. And Michael Goth, I think I'm saying his last name right, I'm not sure, uh, he has a small role in this movie. Now, Michael Goth would go on to play Alfred in Tim Burton's Batman movies. But yeah, that's my review on The Serpent and the Rainbow. I personally think this is one of Wes Craven's best movies, and I think it's one of his most underrated movies. So if you haven't seen The Serpent and the Rainbow yet, I highly, highly recommend it. So yeah, that's my review on The Serpent and the Rainbow, and once again, rest in peace, Wes Craven, and bye.